Hi, I'm Ron Falk, and today I'm going to give you a tour of my portable wood shop. My portable wood shop is in a 14-foot all-aluminum trailer. When it's time to go to the job, all I have to do is close up the door and hook it up to the truck and go to the job. And the first thing I need to do is place it so if it's coming back to the shop where it functions as my tool room, I store all of my tools in here so that when it's time to go, I don't need to think about what tools I need for the job. I have the entire shop, whether it's here in the shop as a tool room or whether it's on the job as a portable tool room or portable tool shop, I've got everything I need. So the first thing I do is arriving at the job, I find the best spot for it. Typically, 99.9% .9 of the time, I back it up to the garage door of the house I'm working on tight so that the ramp door will not even open until the garage door is open. And the advantage of this is that one, it keeps, if it is raining or the weather's inclement, it keeps it a little tighter and keeps uh, rain from getting in the trailer during the day. But at the end of the day, when it's time to go home, because the uh, cord and hose are fed through a hole in the floor, I can leave it plugged in and leave those things out. And all I have to do is close up the ramp door, lock it, and then close the garage door to the house for an extra measure of security. So once I arrive on the job and place the trailer, I disconnect the truck, put a tongue lock on, and then I hook up the, uh, run the cords out and hook up the uh, extension cord to uh, the best power supply available. I have a hundred foot cord coiled up and all I have to do is feed that through a hole in the floor and pull it out at the, when it's time to go, I unplug it and roll it back in. So it's a, it's a real simple and easy method to, uh, to make it easy for me to roll up the trailer and go. I did a 32 video series on the building of this all the way from uh, before I purchased the trailer, took a last look at my last, uh, my mobile wood shop that was in the back of a truck and was actually set up when I arrived. The table saw and miter saw had a place that I could actually work inside of the truck. But I sold that and went back to a tool trailer. And the concept of the tool trailer, I've used a lot of different names for it in other videos. A uh, rolling toolbox, uh, awesome rolling toolbox. Uh, it's a tool pantry, it's a mobile tool room. And that's probably the best concept is it, it is a mobile tool room. When it's in the shop, it doesn't matter where my shop is, I can bring the tool room in, uh, either up to the shop or in the shop and I have everything I need. Uh, so I don't have a dedicated shop per se. I have a big space that I can work in and I can bring my vehicles in and, and set up my shop and leave it all set up. Uh, but when it's time to go, it's pretty easy to pack it up and take off. So again, there's a lot of detail in the 32 video series, but I wanted to give an overall kind of detailed view of, of how it ended up. A comment I had uh, on some of the other videos or the other videos was, hey, we want to kind of see how it finished. And so I had given all the details, but really didn't show the overall finish. So when I arrive on a job, uh, probably the most important tool to me is my workbenches. So I have my total uh, tool station, which is my miter stand, my table saw stand, and my router stand, as well as a small workbench. And that is all in this one uh, containment here that I can pull out and it's built out of half inch plywood, uh, lots of holes drilled in it. It's very, very light, so it doesn't stress me at all to uh, physically to uh, set this up. And every part and piece, the, the saw horses, the extensions, everything I need are contained in this. So all I have to do is pull it out and set it up on the job. Typically, I, I'm not on one, day, one or two day jobs. I'm oftentimes on a job for weeks, if not months. So when I pull this stuff out and set it up, it's there for the long haul. I don't roll it up each day. So I'll leave my benches and I'll usually uh, gather up my hand tools and put them away just for a little extra security. But the cords and hoses and benches and all of those things and bigger tools, usually my miter stand and my, or my miter saw and my table saw will, will just stay on the job. I, I usually won't pack those up until it's time to put them away and leave. In addition to the space for the, uh, total word shop, the total station here. I uh, gave myself enough room to add another one. I, I have thoughts of possibly building a framing version of this out of materials uh, that can handle rain and, and outside weather. 
uh, and also maybe a different miter saw. So I've, I've got a big space here for that. Currently, I just put a couple of saw horses in. Um, they can fit in other places, but for now they fit there really well. So again, I can pull this straight out and set up. Then when I need a larger bench in addition to this, I have my eight foot or my four by eight bench up here that's a multi-part bench and I have the sawhorses for it in their permanent location right inside of here. So again, my benches are, are set up to pull right out. Uh, they're very lightweight, easy to, easy to do, um, and that's the reason I have them in this location so that I'm not fighting them out of a tight location um, in the back. Then I have uh, my levels. I have quite a few levels. I have uh, a plate plate level that goes out to 10 feet and an eight foot level and I have a door jam level. Uh, I have a, uh, a couple of four foot levels and I have a digital level and they're all right in here and they slide in. They, ha they each have their own spot. They will only go in as far as they are long. So this little short guy here, I just stick it in the hole there and there's a stop for it. And again, each one has their own spot. And then, um, if you watch my other videos, you know I'm a big Festool fan and I use their track system for uh, my track saw, for uh, routers, and, and for pretty much the whole Festool system. So I have a slot here for a couple of my tracks so that they're easy to get to. And then my squares, a uh, nice little place uh, to put them here. So above the garage where I keep my benches and on top of the garage I keep my other benches, here I have my larger power tool, so I have a couple of table saws. I have a carpenter's bag that's just an empty bag. This is what I use to uh, pull on when I'm on small jobs or just want to bring in a lot of small tools. I just load them in this and carry them in and out. At the end of the day, I use this multiple times, bringing tools out, unloading the bag, going back in with the bag. I also have my Craig jig, which is, a, if you, again, watch my other videos, you know I use that quite a bit for pocket hole work. Uh, second table saw, I have uh, my planer, my big DeWalt planer, and then I have my miter saw up here. So I have my large tools in this area. They're at a great height. These are up here. They're really light, so they're easy for me to get down. These are a lot heavier, a lot more, uh, you know, stress on the body, so I want to have these at a location easy to slide, slide in and out. Below the uh, big power tools, I have uh, this four inch deep shelf that I use for storing uh, all manner of accessories, every kind in size of screw and, uh, you know, pocket screws, wood screws of all different diameters and sizes, um, and uh, some electrical parts, electrical tape, uh, plumber's tape, just uh, zip ties, just on and on, and they're all very visible. I use these containers and I've had a lot of questions asked about these and I've, I've commented on it, but just so it's clear, these are just a plastic container and they have a, a, a slot in the top, very reminiscent of the old coin wallets back from when I was a kid. Um, but they are uh, made by Viewtainer, that's V-I-E-W-T-A-I-N-E-R, Viewtainer. Home Depot sells them and you can also get them online directly from, View, from Viewtainer. But um, they're, they're fairly inexpensive, uh, two, three dollars a piece depending on the size. And I have about three different sizes. Primarily though, I use the larger um, standard size that I think is a, around uh, 10 inches or something like that. So I have three rows of that. Those are eight foot rows. So I have 24 feet there of, uh, you know, again, lots and lots of, of, a, of the kind of, uh, uh, miscellaneous materials to keep me on the job so I'm not running for a few screws or a few nails. I, I even keep, even though I store framing nails in, in cartons uh, because obviously when it's time to frame I go through a lot more of those than just a few, but I'll even keep various nails in these just to have a small assortment of nails that I can grab out uh, quickly. Behind the eight-foot section with all of the workbenches and the larger power tools I have uh, my largest uh, tool chest, this is a shop built bank of drawers, there are six drawers deep uh, this way and also from front to back very deep. So these are uh, uh, very versatile, they're just an open box basically. I can pull these out and take them in on the job if I need, but most of the time I just uh, will reach in and grab what I need out of each drawer. Every drawer 
um, on in the entire trailer are labeled with very easy to read uh, black letters, large black letters in a nice easy to read font. So I'm not going through all of these drawers trying to figure out where things are at. Back behind the drawers I have a shelf unit uh, that has pull out shelves. These shelves can be pulled all the way out and taken into the job or I can just work off of them. I use these bins quite a bit. Uh, I can grab a bin and take it in uh, if necessary. These aren't labeled. I can see into them uh, quite well. I may label them in the future, but for now I can just see in. And the idea of having these pull out uh, was because if, if I just had fixed shelves, um, I would have to be able to make them a little further apart to see what I have and be able to get back in there. But with being able to pull them out, and they don't, they won't just slide out uh, in transit. I've set them up with a small hole in the bottom and I have to actually lift them about an eighth of an inch and then pull out. So they, so if I try to just pull them straight out, they're not going to come. So I lift them a little bit and they pull out and then that way I'm able to use the entire shelf. And again, if this, this deep of a shelf, it would be very difficult to use the back of it. Um, I'd have to pull things out to get to it. So this really, uh, this gives me twice as much real estate a as a fixed shelf would. And on the very bottom, I don't have a pullout, but this is where my big boxes of, of heavy boxes of uh, nails and screws um, go. So I keep my inventory back here. Again, I load the butaners from this stuff, so it's easy to use, use them from the butaner. But I, you know, obviously go through a lot of this stuff and I, I want to have back stock so that I'm not uh, having to leave the job to go get something when I run out of a certain size screw or, or nail. And in this same cabinet here, just further back, I have a coat closet. I keep a rain suit and carpenter's pants. I keep my, uh, my nail vest in here, as well as this is a great spot. I store my brooms and also the uh, vacuum wands and those tall things. They stay in the back there. So this, uh, this is real handy for that. I also took advantage of the top of the cabinet. I um, put some sides on it so that uh, I could store things up here that um, uh, are kind of cumbersome. So I have my uh, cross-cut jig for my table saw. I have some jigs that for a specialty purpose for doing crown molding and for uh, doing coping. And I also keep um, my router table fence up here as well. A couple of those for different purposes. A little storage here. In the very back uh, corner here, I have a couple of hose, regular garden hose reels that I've attached to the trader walls. And this uh, holds uh, vacuum hoses. I've got two layers of that. Um, use vacuum uh, vacuums for quite a few things to collect dust off of uh, tools as well as uh, just cleaning up the job. And then I have a couple of ladders. You probably can't see them in the video, but I keep a seven foot and a four foot ladder, a three legged ladder. I use those on the job all the time. Straight in the back in the nose of the trailer, um, I have another shelf unit with pull-out shelves. Just like the other one, it's just a great place to put some tools and some accessories. So I keep a little bit of painter's uh, supply, some wood putties, some cleaners, lots of tapes, uh, my shims, some of my uh, jigs for tools, rags. Uh, so I've got, you know, everything that I need on the job. And then right beside where I keep uh, the extension cords and air hoses and other tools on the wall, I have uh, standard garden hose reels. One holds 100 feet of air hose, and the other one holds a 100 foot 10-3 extension cord. This provides all the power that I need for the trailer. I simply have a pigtail that goes to a junction box back in here, and this has a GFI built into it, and so this powers the entire trailer, and all I need to do is plug that pigtail into the long extension cord once it's pulled out and plugged in. And beneath there, uh, my compressor, it is plugged in and ready to operate. I don't need to move it. Um, it it uh, stays in the trailer at all times. And by running out the uh, air hose and then just plugging it right into the air that's plumbed into the trailer, which the uh, compressor is always plugged into, uh, I can have the air on the job again without having to pull out the compressor. So uh, this this stop not only keeps the dividers in, 
but it also keeps the tools from falling out in transit. So I don't need to uh, secure the tools in any other way. Never had a tool come out of any of these, of these cubbies that I've had in a variety of trailers and trucks over many, many years. And then I've taken advantage of the rafters in the trailer and just put some clamps up here, clamps that I like to have easy access to and that tend to take up a lot of drawer space. So this space is here, it's out of my way and they're also very visible so I can grab them uh, whenever I need them. And I don't forget that I have them, even little specialty clamps like these miter clamps that I use quite a bit during finish and it's nice just to have them and know right where they're at and even the tool that uh, for installing them is there. I have a little uh, shelf unit here. This is primarily for my batteries. I charge all my batteries in the trailer. I don't take the chargers in so all the chargers I need are here. And then I have a shelf of charged batteries ready to go and then any batteries that need to be charged would go on that shelf there. And then a small uh, shelf unit right in front of the workbench. I have a small workbench here just for, uh, you know, getting tools out, laying them out when I'm getting started or in the day. Or if I've got to do a tool repair, you know, put a new cord on a tool or a new driver and a nail gun. And then some basic, uh, some more basic uh, materials. And finally on this side, I have a couple of eight foot drawers. These drawers help me to uh, keep a lot of larger tools organized. I've got a laser jam in here. I've got some third hand, uh, just those kind of things. They're not heavy, they're just cumbersome. And, and, and to find a place to put them, this is just very convenient. Very easy to get out of the back of the trailer. And the drawer below that, it's a little heavier, but I keep a lot of demo tools, wrecking bars, sledgehammers, and on the other side of that, I have a space to store two planks. They're extendable planks from eight to 12 feet. Again, a lot of interior work, doing crown molding and things like that. It's nice to have those to spread out on a couple of saw horses so that I can work along a higher ceiling without having to get up and down a ladder. I have a Bloom mini jig that for building cabinets. I would like that to be in the trailer. I just didn't have any space for it, but it is a specialty tool and I know when I'm going to be uh, making cabinets. So I'll just load that in the trailer uh, and uh, in the inside on the floor on the trailer and take it with me for those kind of jobs. And I can just set it up on the job and leave it there until I'm done. I don't take my tile saw and all the tile tools. Uh, unless I'm doing a tile job and I don't do, uh, I don't take all my paint. I've got a paint sprayer and all the paint equipment. That's just boxes and boxes of things. So I've got those organized on a shelf. If I'm on a job where I'm going to paint all the drywall inside, then I just load all that stuff in the aisle. So I've got plenty of room in the aisle to, for specialty jobs. I can also swing by the lumber store and fill this up plywood stack nicely in there, long materials. And then I have my truck which I can carry materials as well. So that's a tour of my portable wood shop or my rolling tool room. It works for me and hopefully there's just a couple of ideas that you can use in your uh, business if you're a contractor or a carpenter to make you just a little bit more efficient. If you've got the tools with you, you've got the materials with you, you've got the accessories with you, you can stay on the job, you can get the job done quicker, you can give your clients a fair price and still make a nice profit if you're efficient. If you're driving to and from the job, you're burning gas, you're burning time, uh, you're, you're cutting into your profits, or you gotta charge your clients more money. If they see you roll up in something like this and see how efficient you work, they're gonna glad you, gladly write you a check. And you're gonna do a better job because you have the tools and it's easy to get the tools in and out. If you like these videos, and again, there's 32 videos uh, detailed in this trailer as well as a bunch more. There's well over 100 videos on the Paul Holmes uh, YouTube channel. Please subscribe here. And if you're interested in one of a uh, set of plans to build yourself one of the workbenches that you see me use in my videos, click here and you'll go right to my Paul Holmes website where you can choose the plan you want, check out, and you will be able to uh, in a matter of minutes, you'll get an email at the bottom of that email scroll all the way down. You will find a link and a password and you download the plans right away. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.